The 102nd Maine Legislature voted the Maine State Archives into existence, and that law was enacted on June 8, 1965. Voting for it in his first term as a legislator was a Democratic representative from Eagle Lake, John Martin. The Secretary of State at the time, to whom the bill was referred, was Ken Curtis, who would later become governor. The governor at the time was John Reed, who went on to serve the federal government in Washington, D.C. The archives was seen as uh, a necessary agency, so necessary, in fact, that it also needed company. And so the legislature, in addition to uh, finding a need for a state archives, also wanted to formalize a Maine State Museum and wanted to give a sense of additional presence to the Maine State Library. The library had been uh, part of Maine State governments in 18 1839, but the museum, the library, and the archives taken in the aggregate, it was fine to have them, but they had no place for them. Uh, the museum was part of the State House display, the library uh, less so, and the archives didn't exist at all. So in addition to uh, passing legislation to create the Maine State Archives, the 102nd also put together a, a study group, an authority, to take a look at what the needs would be and where you might put these agencies if you had your, your, your choice. And after a year uh, of study, they came back and in 1966 decided that this would be uh, the, the location of the cultural building directly south of the, of the Capitol and that that building would house all three agencies. They sent the question to pay for the construction of that building to the main public and it was overwhelmingly approved and a total of 4.8 million dollars was uh, raised or bonded uh, to construct the cultural building to house the Maine State Archives, the Maine State Museum, and the Maine State Library. And up to that time those documents had been scattered about the state campus. Uh, some <laughs> One of the stories was that that led to the uh, formation of the idea of having a formal archives was that Maine's first constitution was found sort of, sort of stored but actually just sitting at the bottom of an abandoned elevator shaft. That's not the right place for the Maine state constitution and a lot of the office buildings then in use by the state were not the appropriate preservation areas or access to the public areas for those documents there needed to be a home, and that home became the Maine State Archives. Sam Silsby was named the first Maine State Archivist, and he presided for the next 20 years. Over the course of the 50 years of the Maine State Archives, the demand for physical space grew and grew to the point where, in 2015, the Maine State Archives does not have enough room for the hard copy, the paperwork, uh, that is the permanent record of the activities of Maine State government. In recent years, uh, we have seen uh, the growth of technology have a further impact upon it. Not only are we concerned about the hard copy pieces that uh, are not here, and that's over 10%, 15% of the permanent record of the state of Maine, uh, we're looking to capture that, but we're also looking to capture the digital record. Those documents that are born on the computer stay on the computer. How do we preserve them? How do we provide the access to that? Uh, document that the public requires and that we want. and uh, That's part of our responsibility as well here at the Archives and it's going to be part of the continuing challenge as we face our next 50 years. Visitors to the cultural building will notice first when they enter the atrium, uh, the most recent section added to uh, the cultural building, they will see large uh, banners which feature trademarks that uh, were filed with the Secretary of State and presented to the State Archives of businesses wanting to do uh, business, wanting to sell products in the State of Maine, wanting to uh, locate their business in the State of Maine. Within the lobby of the Archives, we will have examples of uh, uh, a number of the maps that we have. We have over 7,000 maps in the collection of the Maine State Archives, and some of them are fascinating, dating back before the 1700s. Some of them are far more recent, including a fire tower map. Those fire tower maps, we have over 100, uh, nearly 100 of those, and they are amazing pieces of, of work. Not only are they technically accurate, uh, well engineered, but they are a fount of information and also pretty close to works of art. In addition to the documents, uh, the paper record of the state of Maine, uh, Maine was also blessed by having the work of photographers, uh, either under state employ or people who were uh, kind enough to donate uh, 
photographic images of Maine, uh, sometimes the most homely images of Maine. Somebody working a, uh, the backside of a, of a woodlot, somebody harvesting potatoes, somebody harvesting blueberries, people on a beach, people fishing, uh, just general scenics, where the state of Maine was captured, not just its locations, but its people. And in that capturing, uh, they form a record of their own that is fascinating to study. And whether it's a front door or whether it's the back lot, whether it's the, the coast, whether it's the mountains, uh, there is something there that can be read by current and future generations of how Maine used to be and in many cases how Maine still is. Welcome to the Maine State Archives. My name is Betsy Specky. I'm Archivist 3 here, accompanied by Samuel Howes, our Archivist 2. We are three archivists here at the Maine State Archives assisting patrons, and it's a pleasure to be able to uh, have the state's records available for the public. Upon entering the Maine State Archives search room, visitors will check in at the registration station First-time researchers to the Maine State Archives should be prepared to fill out a researcher registration form and also show proof of ID, such as a driver's license. From there, they're able to view uh, records on Ancestry.com, as well as other holdings we have on our databases. Available on our microfilm, which is one of our most requested collections, is a large collection of pre-1892 vital records. These records consist of about 20% of Maine towns. Uh, also available are Civil War records, a large variety of court records dating back to 1636 York County. Additional roles of microfilm include our Senate journals, House journals, and laws passed by the Maine legislature. In addition to the computers and the microfilm, we have Helen Tutwiler, our Archivist One, who's able to assist walk-in patrons who might be requiring original documents housed in the floors below. These may be viewed in our original documents area in the center of the search room. The Maine State Archives is engaged in educational outreach. The State Archivist visits schools to give presentations to students, and on occasion, students visit the archives and some of the items we enjoy showing to them explain how important it is to have archival material stored in a safe way. We start out by showing illustrations of what used to be thought of as a great medium for storing data. This is a blank punch card from early computers. Who remembers these? A floppy disk. Save all your material on here and you'll have it forever. That's only as good as the technology to be able to read this. That's some of the challenges that the digital archives initiatives throughout the state are seeking to um, understand how to take this technology into the next dec decade and the next generations. Ever heard terms of acid-free or archival paper or non-archival? This early folder, when opened, reveals the damage done by acid in paper, staining the actual ink into the inside of this folder. Part of the mission of the Main State Archives is to preserve the documents. So when we find items that are stored in non-archival materials, we put them into archival sleeves, folders, and boxes. Sometimes an event happens that's beyond our control. On tours to school groups, we enjoy showing this block of files from the 1850s. At the bottom, you can see where this box was stored improperly at an off-site location and cement was poured, forever keeping this group of documents together. Today, the Maine State Archives is working on a massive inventory of all of our holdings. As part of our process of digitizing all of our items to have them into a da database, which will eventually be available to the public. Located here are a number of our old court records, much of which are available upstairs on microfilm. 
Uh, these are the original records here. They consist of a large variety of things from civil cases, divorces, criminal files. This is from our earliest court record here from 1636 in York County. Uh, within this book is a certain couple of pages which talk about the Charter of Maine, which came from Charles I in 1637. These shelves contain some of our trademark records, which are fascinating snapshots both into the history of business in the state of Maine as well as artwork. What we have here are a couple pages from one of our many trademark books. It contains a facsimile of the actual application to register the trademark in the state of Maine. Here is an example of one from a business located outside of Maine. This 1934 trademark registration is for Mickey Mouse Animal Crackers. Located here is our collection of field notes dating back to the mid-19th century. These are from surveyors working for the mainland office. Uh, all of these field notes correspond with maps. All of our plan books have already been imaged and reproductions are available for purchase from the Maine State Archives. This section of the archives houses many of our Civil War carte de visites as well as stereo views. We're going to look at an image of John Andrews who was in the first Maine cavalry. This handsome carte de visite is dated July 16th, 1864 and has a particularly nice decorative surround around his image. This is the vault at the Maine State Archives where some of our most precious items are stored. Here we have the original 1819 State of Maine Constitution. This leather bound volume is on original parchment. Oftentimes, documents arrive at the archives in a tri-folded condition. In order for these to be imaged by our imaging department, they'll need to be humidified and flattened. This is our humidification chamber where we actually flatten our case files. Once the document has been humidified properly, we open the door here, gently grab the document before placing it between paper to dry. My name is Robert Karen, and I am the Supervisor for Records Management Division of the Maine State Archives. It is our responsibility to keep records for all state agencies and the courts. Uh, currently, we have 45,000 boxes here in this building. That is archival material. We have 55,000 boxes of material in the Bablo building down the street in an annex. This is all non-permanent material, and it is all the state's material, but also your material. It is material that you need when you're looking for a divorce or a civil case, or if you're looking for any type of record regarding your personal lives. Over to your left is our material that is going out. This goes to a facility to be shredded. All the other boxes you see, many of them are now tagged. We use a tagging system that gives us all the information that you need on each box. If we come around the corner a little bit, you can see the, the depth and breadth of the size of this warehouse. It's probably not the largest compared to other states, but it gives a good example of just how much material we keep. All of this material is non-permanent, and we hope to be able to start a scanning program where this material will become electronic. When you are looking for your file now, it will be a button push away rather than a 24-hour turnover through the mail. My name is Peter Mallow. Uh, I'm a photographer here at the archives. Uh, my responsibilities uh, range from preservation microfilming to preservation digital imaging, uh, creation of exhibits and displays, and we also fulfill orders for the public. A lot of times the orders are requests for printed materials of originals that we have here at the archives. We also produce all the exhibits uh, in-house. We have a large format printer where we can do oversized objects. There are also numerous other printers where we do double-sided printing for 
uh, replicas of letters and other correspondence and treaties, documents and the like. Uh, we have orders that we fulfill of, of maps and atlases that we print CDs. Right now I'm working on an exhibit for the 50th anniversary of the State Archives. This is a copy of the 1876 Maine State Constitution, the front page, which is on vellum. We produce copies of maps, and some of these maps are still used today by surveyors and uh, sometimes end up uh, as evidence in legal cases. Along with the digital imaging we do with the large medium format camera, we do scanning of transparencies. Uh, right now we're working on a project from the Department of Economic Development. It's over 10,000 uh, black and white 4x5 and medium format negatives. There are about uh, 2,200 negatives into that and it really is an amazing photographic history uh, and document of the state. So hopefully as time goes on we'll be able to get through them all and make these available to the public. Everything we do is right now computer based. Although we still work with microfilm, we have a microfilm inspection station and we have dark rooms where we do microfilm processing and sometimes every once in a while we will do treatments of photographs and photographic negatives. What we discuss with uh, school kids about the importance of the archives is that it represents the evidence of who we are as a people. Archi the archives documents how people faced incredible challenges and did so either successfully or unsuccessfully. We've had more information created since 2008 than was, than was created in all of human history be before that, which represents some of the challenges that we face now. How do we contain and preserve that digitally created information? If we don't face those challenges and succeed, then we could be risking the loss of the information of an entire age. So we're very cognizant of that, we're very careful about it, but also we want to make sure that people understand what's here, their records of who they are as a people and how they became what they are. And you don't really find that in the museum or in the library. You find a lot of different texts, a lot of different contexts, but this is the evidence and that's the main difference. And, and we're quite proud of what we do here and what we are preserving for future generations and hopefully we continue to succeed.